Good morning. Good morning to you all this morning. I hope this finds you well. I feel like singing. Um, the sun has got his hat on, hip 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 hooray, or something like that. After the last couple of days, it um, it was a bit a bit blustery here last night, as I'm sure it was with you. If you're um, joining us from further north, it was a lot worse up up there. So um, prayers for all of uh, those who are struggling with having been flooded and um, had to leave their homes today. Happy birthday, Brenda. Good to have you with us. Good to have you with us, Barbara, as well. <laughs> Obviously having a, a quiet morning, I think. There we go. I'll give it another couple of minutes. There's much rattling around going on downstairs. I think we're between lessons or something. Actually, no, he's that's right. Graham's marking this morning and then he's got a lesson in a bit. From the comments I've heard didn't do too great but never mind life goes on it's good to be gathered this morning right I'm going to use um, the Iona liturgy that I tend to use on a Thursday and um, Psalm 115 um, Kathy 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 asked me the other day I bumped into her delivering things to the food bank on Monday, um, which version um, I was using um, when I um, read on Monday. And I said, oh, it's, it's the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, that I tend to use if I've just clicked buttons, because that's the one on the Church of England apps. It's the one they use at the cathedral. It's the one they make us write essays in as well when we had to write essays. That's thankfully um, not a thing any longer for me. Um, but um, I might read from the NIV tonight, today, this morning. Good grief, wake up Rachel. Um, I'll read 115 from the NIV this morning because I suspect that's what most of us have. I've, I've been and got a copy out. But I warn you, not all the copies of the um, NIV are the same. So if it doesn't sound like yours, don't panic. So let's take a moment of quiet. The world belongs to God, the earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together, justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. Open our lips, O God, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Lord, we do praise you for... Um, certainly around here, the blessing of sunshine this morning. Sunshine after the storms of the last 24 hours. We praise ye for all that we see around us of your creation. The birds of the air. Those flowers that are hanging on, or springing up in our gardens. For the wide open spaces nearby which we can exercise in. And for your great love for us. And as we acknowledge 
that love we also are reminded of where we fall short of sharing that love appropriately of where we perhaps are frustrated with things that we need to accept hurt people where we should be encouraging them and comforting them and so we say holy god maker of all have mercy on us jesus christ servant of the poor have mercy on us holy spirit breath of life have mercy on us and so in a moment of silence we confess our faults and admit our frailties For God, with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others and the life of the world. May God forgive us, Christ renew us and the Spirit enable us to grow in love. Move among us, O God, give us life. Let your people rejoice in you. Make our hearts clean within us. Renew us in mind and in spirit. Give us again the joy of your help. With your spirit of freedom, sustain us. And Lord, we do pray for that sustaining power of your Holy Spirit not just for ourselves but particularly for those who struggle with energy and patience and illness and workload with financial hardship we ask you Lord to sustain those in need that through your power we might find courage, hope and strength. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so... As we rejoice in the gospel that was proclaimed most particularly yesterday at the American inauguration, where God's word was spoken loud and clear in references to scripture, in poetry and in a call to unity. we affirm with the whole church that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply 
than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and in the world. And so Psalm 115 um, from the UK version of the NIV. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk, nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. All of you Israelites trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the human race. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who extol the Lord, both now and forever. Praise the Lord. Very much follows on from where we were um, when I last gathered with you on Monday. And we were sharing descriptions of God's praising him for the many ways that he um, acts in our lives. And here, very much, we're encouraged um, not to make idols of things. Um, I don't think um, we're uh, making um, small models of gold or silver or whatever. But there may be things that we um, are spending too much time on um, that are detrimental to our mental health or the health of our family and our relationships. Um, it may include social media. It may well not include social media. Um, so many things that we find um, a blessing in life, like aforementioned social media, um, can also be a, a curse if you use it the wrong way. Um, if you use it too much. And so it's important to find the right balance in um, all that we do so that one thing doesn't um, dominate our lives and get in the way of, most importantly, of course, our relationship with God. And we are reminded with that sort of repetition of um, it's actually a liturgical thing from, they think, from the temple where different groups of people um, would have been involved in worship. Um, for example, the House of Aaron would have been the community of, of priests and ministers at the temple. Um, but we're reminded 
to keep our focus on God as our help and shield because it is through focusing on him that we will flourish. Just wondering if any of you have any further thoughts on that psalm this morning. I'm trying to make this a bit more interactive. But uh, it's, again, one of the pitfalls of uh, social media. It can become very one way. And uh, we lose the sense of community, though it is very good that we have such a faithful group of you who pray both in the mornings at 10 o'clock and at other times of the day, um, who pick this up. So it's worth just remembering them, those who aren't with us at this moment, as we um, turn to prayer in a moment. So I'll leave that there since there's no further comment at the moment. I'll have a look again in a minute and say for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. And so we turn to our intercessions, our prayers of gratitude and concern. And as we watch from a distance, as America moves forward into a, a new phase of leadership, as perhaps some of the um, cracks in relationships in the leadership of our own country become a little more apparent, we do pray, Lord, for all who lead the nations, who carry that burden of responsibility, who need not just the experience of life to stand them in good stead, but your guidance, Lord, your peace and your wisdom in large doses as they make difficult decisions and try and bring um, physical and national healing to broken, <coughs> excuse me, national relationships. We pray for all those other countries in the world that are probably feeling rather um, shoved to one side as being not newsworthy at this precise moment but where there is long-standing division, conflict, warfare, death and disease. And so we remember too places like the Yemen, Syria, the ongoing relationship that is Palestine-Israel. The Philippines. Lord, let all those in authority not worship the idols of power, of money, but instead focus on justice and mercy. We remember 
to those in this country who have been made um, homeless or evacuated because of the floods for the emotional cost the risk to life and limb to property those who struggle emotionally with the the loss of um, dear family keepsakes and the difficulties they face where constant flooding means a loss of value to home, the inability to sell and move away. Comfort those who've been afflicted that way overnight. And also, Lord, be with those in other countries who are affected by natural disasters of varying sorts, but who have so much less in the first place, whose homes are so easily swept away or burnt down, and who are left with literally nothing. Be with all those, Lord, in agencies who support those made um, homeless by natural disaster. Equip them for clear up operations. Give generosity to those who might be able to help in some way. And protect all those, both the rescued and the rescuer, from such disasters causing further COVID infection. We continue to remember all those in our NHS in particular who are just wrung out by the constant need, the constant concern, the constant grief for those who they give their lives to helping. Remember others who provide us with our basic services, those who deliver postage and parcels, those who teach and support our teachers. Those who empty our dustbins. Those who deliver our food, particularly those to those who are shielding. Help them to know your presence, Lord, in all that they do. Remember to our friends and loved ones who have asked by name for prayer and so we hold them before you Lord seeking healing and comfort praying that their pain will be um, 
I've become. And that each might know the hope of faith in you and trust in our shared journey to your presence. And specifically we name Chris and Pete, Sylvia, Celia, Sasha, Sue and others receiving chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Joseph, Lara, Shane, Philip and others known to us struggling with COVID or recovering from it. We pray for Helen's family and friends as they grieve, for Brian and Beryl, for Doreen and Jed, for John and Joan, for Patricia, for Nikki, for Claire, for Adrian, Audrey, Naomi, Pat, Carl, Isabella and her family, Margaret and Norman, Dave and Marion, and Ellen. O oh Christ, you are within each of us. It's not just the interior of the walls in which we live, it is our own inner being you have renewed. We are your temple, not made with hands. We are your body. If every wall should crumble and every church decay, we are your habitation. Nearer are you than breathing, closer than hands and feet. Ours are the eyes with which you and the mystery look out with compassion on the world. Yet we bless you for the place in which we find ourselves today. For your directing of us, your redeeming of us and your indwelling. We ask not for what we want, but for what you know we need, as we offer this day and ourselves to you and for you, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. So, Brenda's commented, verses 14 and 16 of Psalm 115, a beautiful and uplifting. Yes, may the Lord cause you to flourish, be blessed. The highest heavens belong to the Lord. The earth he has given to the human race. There's a challenge. We need to take care of it. Thank you, Brenda. That's uh, a good way to start to conclude our prayers. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will not offer to God offerings that cost us nothing. Go in peace to love and to serve. We will seek peace and pursue it. In the name of the Trinity of love, God in community, holy and one. So it's been good to be with you again this morning. Um, I shall now settle down, down to planning um, and recording Sunday's worship. And I uh, hope that the day is good to you and you are able to make the most of the sunshine while it lasts. Go well and God bless.